Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. In today's video we're going to cover a practical example of correlation. In the previous video we covered what correlation is and how it works, so today's video we're going to jump right into it. Before we get started I'd like to point out that X1 in this instance is simulating our radar output. So this is the known shape of the signal we're looking for and X2 is our sensor data and inside X2 we're looking for this specific shape. Now when deciding the length of your correlation array, there's a simple formula. It's the length of your first array plus the length of your second array, 3 and 5, which would be 8, minus 1. So in this instance we've got an array length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And what you do is simply put in both of your arrays and then append zeros to them to make them length 7. Okay, so let's get started. Firstly, I'd like to point out that our correlation can be defined in discrete time as shown here. So, we're simply iterating over all of our values of x2 and multiplying them by the value x1. And then our new array will be the resultant values. Okay, so doing that for our first row, we have 1 times 3 is 3, plus 10, minus 8, equals 5. So our first value here is 5. Now, n plus 1 causes a shift to the left in our samples, which will give us our new array, 2, 1, 6, negative 7, 0, 0, 3. And then we repeat the process again. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 times 5 is 5, that's 7, minus 48, which will be minus 41. Let's continue. We'll move it once more again to the left, and that will give us 1, 6, negative 7, 0, 0, 3, 2. And then let's multiply them again. 1 times 1 is 1, 5 times 6 is 30, that's 31, plus negative 8 times negative 7 is 56, plus 31, which will be 87. So at this point here, our signal has a high correlation which indicates that there's a delta t of 2. However, there might be a higher correlated time throughout the rest of our signal, so we have to finish our correlation. Let's shift again, which will give us 6, negative 7, 0, 0, 3, 2, 1. Repeating the process again, we have 6 times 1 is 6, plus 5 times negative 7, which is negative 35, the 8 and 0 would cancel, the 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 3 is 0, 0 and 2 is 0, and 0 and 1 are 0, which simply leaves us with negative 35 plus 6, which would be negative 29. We'll repeat this process for the remaining three iterations. Okay, so there we have it. We have our R of M array. Let's quickly rewrite that now. R of m is equal to 5, negative 41, 87, negative 29, negative 7, negative 24, and negative 1. This indicates that there's a highest correlation at our n plus 2. Hopefully you should be able to see this from our two sample arrays. I chose these specifically to show that there's a higher correlation at this point here, where 1 and 1 are identical, 5 and 6 are almost identical, and so are negative 8 and negative 7. At this point here, the two signals correlate the highest, and because of that, we have a higher value. If we can think of this in an xy plane, just as we did in the previous example. Our first value would be a value of positive 5, our second value would be a value of negative 41. Our third value would be positive 87. Our next value would be negative 29. Then negative 7. Then negative 24. Then negative 1. We can see that this point here is our highest correlated value and is likely to be the overlap time of the signal that we're looking for in our sensor data. Okay guys, I know this was another short one. Thanks for watching. I hope that the process of this makes sense to you. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start covering convolution, which is a very similar process. Uh, it's essentially just reversing uh, our X2 array. 
Again, this is not something that you'd like to do by hand, especially when you have higher sampler rays rather than the length 3 and the length 5. Hopefully you can see from this that once you add longer arrays, that this process here is going to grow exponentially and it's not something that a human would ever want to calculate. As always, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.